One flavor of network address translation that we have is static NAT. With static NAT, we're going to map an inside local address, a private IP address, to a specific inside global address, which is publicly routable. Let's take a look at the example on screen. We've got a client with a private IP address of 10.1.1.100, and it's trying to reach the web server at 3.3.3.3. The packet goes into router R1, and as the packet comes in, the source address is the client's IP address, 10.1.1.100, and the destination address is 3.3.3.3. .3 .3 .3. With a static NAT, this router is going to be told that this inside local address is going to be translated into one specific inside global address. This might be useful if we have a web server or some other type of server inside of our network that we want reachable from the outside, and we always want it reachable via a single IP address. This is a way to allow a server that's going to be accessed from the internet to have a private IP address. If we do a static mapping from the inside local address to the inside global address. In this example, we're going to be using an inside global address of 4.4.4.2. Notice it's not the IP address of the router interface. That's just another public IP address that our service provider has made available to us. Well, router R1 is going to do that conversion. It's going to change the source address to 4.4.4.2 and send it on its way. That's how static NAT works. Let's now go into router R1 and set this up and test it. Here's how we're going to configure static NAT on router R1. The first thing we do is we're going to go into interface configuration mode for the inside interface. That's fast ethernet 0 slash 0. Let's say interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0. And we need to tell the router which of these interfaces is the inside NAT interface and which one is on the outside. Well, this is on the inside of our network. And we'll say IP NAT inside. Let's do the same thing for fast ethernet 0 slash 1. That's on the outside of our network. We'll say interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1. And you probably could guess the command at this point. It's IP NAT outside. The only other thing we have to do to make this work is to configure that static mapping. We want to map an inside local address to an inside global address. To do that, we'll say IP NAT inside source static and let's give my inside local address, the private IP address. It is 10.1.1.100. Now we'll specify the inside global address, the address that is publicly routable. We'll say it's 4.4.4.2. And that's it. We've now configured our static mapping. Let's test it. Let's go to our PC, which is a router acting as a PC, and let's do a ping of the web server. Let's say ping. 3.3.3.3. Success. Let's go to router R1 and let's make sure that that translation really did happen. Let's take a look at our IP NAT translations. Let's say show IP NAT translations. And we can see that we have indeed translated 10.1.1.100, our inside local address, to 4.4.4.2 our inside global address. And because we used ping, we even see the protocol that we used was ICMP. That's what ping uses. And we were going to an outside global address out on the internet of 3.3.3.3. And in this example, we just did a single static mapping. But please realize, in the real world, you could give multiple IPNAT inside source commands to have multiple mappings.